Thanks for joining us here on the Oil & Gas Report brought to you by CatchCan. I'm your host, Rob Hislop. We're coming to you from the Global Petroleum Show in Calgary. Now, there's another event that's taking place here this week as well. It is called the SPE Heavy Oil Conference. And joining us right now with that group is Egbert Imomo. And uh, you are with the Society of Petroleum Engineers, which that's is, correct. of course, SPE. Um, tell us a little bit about the conference you've got going on regarding heavy oil. This conference is an inaugural conference focus specifically on heavy oil. And as you know, Canada is uh, well endowed with heavy oil. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got, Canada has got about 170 billion barrels of heavy oil. Of course, you're referring to our oil sands. Our yes. sands, oil yeah. sands, which is quite significant. Yeah. And uh, we thought it was good to put a conference together where people who are experts can get together, share information, share knowledge, and also have social interaction, which is mm -hmm. one of the things that SPE does. We also believe that this, this oil will play a big role in the future of demand for oil in the world. So mm -hmm. it's a good, we thought it was a good idea to put the conference together. Now, you're tied in with, uh, obviously, the Global Petroleum Show because you're here at the same time. Did you find, or do you think that the needs just weren't being met with that show before, so you needed to be a little bit more specific when well, it came to your industry? I think what, one of the things, we always look for partnerships with different groups because we don't believe we have it all, and mm -hmm. sometimes people can bring in their own expertise, bring in their own resources. So when the idea came about cooperating, collaborating with this conference and the GPS, we said, why not? Mm -hmm. And actually, we will be able to rotate every year, we'll have our conference, but you know every other year there's a different sponsor mm -hmm. for the event. So we'll okay. have a SP sponsoring this uh, heavy oil conference mm -hmm. every year. So what sort of things uh, are going to be discussed or being shown as far as, say, new technology that, that might be interesting to people well, here in Alberta? Clearly the whole issue about drilling, completion, uh, processing, production, the environment. Mm -hmm. These are issues that people will talk about. Uh, I understand about a hundred and 20 papers, which are going to be presented over three days. Mm -hmm. uh, they had 300 abstracts. So they had to select, you know, about a third of all the papers that were presented mm -hmm. that are just going to be discussed. So it's been a lot of work, in, uh, and people don't realize it within six months mm -hmm. that this group put this together. So it's been a lot of work in a very short time. Uh, a lot of the focus of these conferences, and it seems like the oil industry as well right now, sustainability seems to be the catchphrase. What does it mean to you? Well, sustainability, we have no right to jeopardize the future for other people. Mm -hmm. Yes, today's world requires the use of energy, but in extracting that energy, we have to make sure that the future is also safeguarded. So both of them are two sides of the same coin, mm -hmm. protecting the environment and providing the needs of the future. Mm -hmm. uh, one side, two sides of the same coin. You cannot do one without the other. If you did one without the other, then you're jeopardizing the future for right. us. It's interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to mention the name, but there's a company that has been in the fast food business for years and advertises that it's 100% pure beef. And, and you have to think, why would you have to say that? And I look at the oil industry and I just think, why do you have to use sustainability now as a catchphrase when you've been around for decades? Why, why do you think, is there a shift in the industry or are they just trying to get out the word that they are looking after the future? The world itself has changed. People want to understand it better. Mm -hmm. People have concerns. And we have to make sure that the understanding of the industry is better. I think for quite a while we also thought that we knew what we were doing and thought that everybody should know what we are doing. Mm -hmm. But we've gone beyond that. The outside world is demanding to know more. They want us to be, to be shown more. And uh, the days of just trust me is gone. Mm -hmm. Yes, trust me, but you have to show people and confirm that what you're doing is the right thing. One of the events that you've got planned here is a young professionals conference. Yes. Tell us about that. Clearly, the industry has a number of young professionals. And these are people, well, not at old fogies like me, the people mm -hmm. who are under 35. These are the future leaders of our industry. And if you, don't, if you can't get them, if you can't attract them today to participate, in running conferences, in learning how to run these conferences. Who's going to do it tomorrow when I step out or some of the people in my, mm -hmm. in my age step out? So we have created this group of young professionals. Room for them to, to socialize, which is mm -hmm. quite important. Room for them to also learn. Room for them to put on their own show so that they become part and parcel of SPE so that when the time comes, they can step in very, very quickly. Is it, leadership. is it difficult for you to attract 
young professionals as well? Because I know for the oil industry, difficult to get people to work on the rigs. There's a bit of a labor shortage at times, and you know, if there's any, if there's anybody that gets hurt, it's difficult to bring somebody else in, and, and there seems to be a bit of a shortage of skilled personnel. Do you find that in your area as well? It depends on the part of the world. Mm -hmm. It depends on the part of the world. In my country, for instance, Nigeria, there's no shortage. Mm -hmm. But imagine here, when you are competing with different industries, you have that shortage. This is why we also have a program whereby we actually go to the secondary schools and teach people in the secondary schools the good career they can get from working in the industry so that they can understand what the industry does. Because many people do not understand that most of the things we do in our lives is impacted by what happens in the industry. Mm -hmm. People jump in their car, they crank their car, they drive away. They put on their gas, gas comes on. Even the toothbrush you use mm -hmm. every day to brush your teeth has something to do with the industry. So mm -hmm. we begin to teach people from a very early age that look, the industry touches your life more than you think. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of joy, a lot and of excitement. And oil as well, obviously, because it's used to manufacture so many different products things, as well. Things, yeah. Yeah. Um, are you encouraged by the way industry is shifting? I mean, you talk about the younger generation trying to get them attracted to the industry. They also want to know, like you said, it's not a case of just trust me, you have to prove it now. Do you think industry is open enough to make that change? Because often it can move at a very slow pace at times. The bigger you are, the harder it is to adapt to change. Frankly, sometimes. industry has no choice but to make that change. Mm -hmm. We have to make that change. Because society is demanding it, and society has the right to demand it. So if you want society on your side, if you want to get your license to operate, which is a term we now use, mm -hmm. You have no choice but to get, make sure society understands and approves what you are doing. Sometimes you've got to use a lot of effort to tell people what you are doing because a lot of people out there don't understand. I mean, I don't understand much about television. I mean, I, mm -hmm. don't, I sit at home and watch television and I assume certain things, but it may not be right, it may not be wrong. But mm -hmm. with our own industry, we want to spend more and more time educating people, telling them what is right, some things we do well, some things we don't do very well. And if we don't do very well, own up to it. So mm -hmm. that's the kind of thing we want to do more and more. Mm -hmm. yeah. Owning up to it seems to be the toughest thing, no matter what industry you're in sometimes, isn't it? It's changing. And the earlier you yeah. do it, people learn that you can't hide. It's mm -hmm. better for you, I tell you. Right, yes. right. Yes. Egbert, thank you very much for spending time with thank us today. Thank you very much. Thank you We've been much. chatting with Egbert Imomo with the uh, Society of Petroleum Engineers. They are the host of the Heavy Oil Conference taking place this week in Calgary.